Hello everybody. Today I am starting module 12 and this is my first lecture. In this lecture I will discuss about the numerical methods of solving the dynamic equations. So in that correction I will uh, speak about the evaluation of Duhamel integral numerically. You know that Duhamel integral is used to find out the response of a system, dynamic system subjected to any type of arbitrary input. It can handle a simple harmonic function or any type of function which is mathematically well defined or even a sample of uh, random uh, function can be also handled by Duhamel integral. So if your forcing uh, function is a sample of random variables then also it can handle such type of problem and find out the response which is also a sample of output. So in that connection this uh, Duhamel integral is very powerful and I want to discuss about the numerical uh, procedure for evaluating the Duhamel integral. So first let us discuss how the numerical procedure can be developed for fourth vibration analysis of a single degree freedom system and thereafter I will discuss its application to a continuous system subject to, to a arbitrary input. Okay. So you know that uh, this integral Duhamel integral is actually known as convolution integral is given by this uh, expression that is f tau h t minus tau d tau. So this is a powerful expression you can see that is used for carrying out the numerical integration or finding the response of a system subjected to any arbitrary input. Here f tau which is a forcing function or function of uh, force is a function of t and t is the time can be any arbitrary type. It is not necessary that it will have a regular function. It can handle any type of this uh, arbitrary function provided the numerical procedure is outlined. Okay. So our topic of discussion will be to develop a numerical procedure. Okay. So the response of a single degree freedom system subjected to a input ft is given by this. So first let us consider a single degree freedom system. It may be damped or undamped also. So in general the system has damped uh, element or damping element. Now in this connection let us draw a general single degree freedom oscillator where xt is the displacement in that direction and it is acted upon by force ft. So in that connection the equation of motion takes the form mx double dot plus cx dot kx equal to ft where ft can be any arbitrary function or a representation of any forcing input. For example, the earthquake ground motion which is having a random nature uh, of its uh, ground acceleration and such type of ground acceleration if we get the record of ground motion history we can analyze the system using the Duhamel integral. So HT is your impulse response function.
there is the most important function required for Duhamel integral. If the system is undamped, system is undamped, then C we take 0. So, in that case, the impulse assessment function will be this 1 divided by m omega n sin omega n t, where omega n is the natural frequency of the system and m is the mass of the single degree freedom oscillator and uh, it is given as a sine function. If the system is uh, considered to have damping, say for damp system, for damp system, the impulse assessment function will be e to the power minus j omega n t divided by m omega d sin omega d t. Now here j is the damping ratio damping ratio and omega d is the damped natural frequency. Omega d is the damped natural frequency it is given by omega n into root over 1 minus j square ok. So two functions are needed one is uh, the impulse assessment function and another is force distribution with time. So if we know these two function we can evaluate the convolution integral or Duhamel integral to find out the response. So our objective of today's lecture is to lay down a procedure for numerical integration of Duhamel convolution integral. Okay. Now uh, this first let us consider an undamped system. So, this is the response of an undamped system with the help of Duhamel's integral. So, x t equal to 1 by m omega n integration 0 to t f tau sin omega n t minus tau d tau. Now, here sin omega n t minus tau can be broken down using the trigonometrical identity that is sin a minus b equal to sin a cos b minus cos a sin b. So, if I use this trigonometrical identity then I can break down this sin uh, omega n t minus tau into this expression. So, this is the decomposition of sin omega n t minus tau. Okay. So, after that I can write that uh, because the integration is uh, with respect to 0 to t. So, sin omega n t is considered to be a constant as well as cos omega n t will also be considered to be a constant. So, I can take this two term outside the integral. So, I can write x t equal to sin omega n t divided by m omega n integration 0 to t f tau cos omega n tau d tau minus cos omega n t divided by m omega n integration f tau into sin omega n tau d tau integration 0 to t. Now you can see this integral I can take it as a function of t. So, I have written a t and then sin omega n t is there. m omega n is a common term. So, I will divide it later. Next, let us write this integral that is 0 to t f tau sin omega n tau d tau as b t. So, x t is nothing but a t sin omega n t minus b t cos omega n t divided by m omega n whereas a t equal to 0 to t integration f tau cos omega n tau d tau 
bt is equal to 0 to t f tau cos omega n tau d tau here this a t is this that you are seeing here and uh, b t will be this sin omega n t so here actually not cos it will be sin omega n tau so two integral i want to evaluate a t is equal to f tau cos omega n tau d tau and d t that is a function of time is 0 to t integration f tau sin omega n tau d tau. So there are different procedure if sometimes the nature of the forcing function is very simple then we can easily integrate this analytically and find an expression for a t and b t. So in that case we get an exact expression for example a harmonic function or a step input or a ramp input we have found that uh, exact integral expression for the integral was found and therefore we get an exact expression. However when the function is very complicated for example f tau consists of a quadratic term combination of quadrating term, harmonic term, exponential term etc. So in that case uh, this uh, analytical evaluation of the integral will be difficult. It can be done but still it will be uh, very cumbersome and it will be sometimes unattractive. So therefore in that case the numerical integration is desired. However, numerical integration will may not result the output as close to the exact value. But for practical purpose, the numerical integration have to be carried out because the analytical solution may not be available in some cases. For example, if F tau is a ground motion that is ground acceleration found from the earthquake recording station and then uh, this uh, integration analytically cannot be evaluated. So in that case numerical integration has to be adopted. Okay. Now there are different ways of uh, carrying out numerical integration. The most common form is the trapezoidal rule and Simpson rule. These two are numerical tools available for integration of any functions. Okay. Now let us see a function which is dependent on time and uh, it is a arbitrary nature. Okay. So this is the function it which is shown here and we want to numerically evaluate this function the integral of this function i tau d tau limit 0 to t that means we want to find the area enclosed by the curve with the x axis ok. So in that case what we will do we will uh, discretize this area into different segments. So let us see at interval del t we have found the coordinates of this curve as i0, i1, i2, i3 etc up to in. So there are n number of divisions and uh, this n is t by delta t. Okay. Now trapezoidal rule says that the integration of i tau d tau within the limits 0 to t will be delta t by 2 into the first ordinate and last ordinate. So i0 plus i n plus 2 times the sum of the remaining ordinates. So here now writing del t by 2 into i0 plus 2 i1 plus 2 i2 plus dot dot up to 2 i n minus 1 and the last ordinate i n it will remain as it is. So i0 is the first ordinate, i n is the last ordinate, so sum of the first and last ordinate and then 2 times the sum of the remaining ordinates. 
So this is what is trapezoidal rule. In trapezoidal rule, the function is assumed to be piecewise linear. So therefore, when there is a curve function that is it is a, having a curvature, then the error involved is significant if we apply the trapezoidal rule. But if the function is linear, then trapezoidal rule give the exact results. Now let us see the Simpson rule of numerical integration. Simpson rule assumes that the function is replaced by a piecewise parabolic curve. So here we use the one third parabolic rule that is a t is now given as del t by 3 and then inside this second bracket what we are writing here first ordinate plus last ordinate into 4 times the sum of the even ordinates plus 2 times the sum of the remaining odd ordinates. You can see here i naught is the first ordinate and i naught is the last ordinate. So we have written i naught and i n. Okay. Then i1 is the second ordinate, so it is an even ordinate. i3 is the fourth ordinate, so it is also even ordinate. So, four times the sum of the even ordinate. So, what we are writing? 4 into i1 plus i3 plus dot dot up to i n minus 2 plus two times the sum of the remaining odd ordinates. So, 2 into odd ordinates you can see the first ordinate is odd ordinates and i n is also odd ordinate because the Simpson rule requires that number of division should be even. So, therefore, number of ordinates are odd. Therefore, here we are getting 2 into i2 plus i4 dot dot up to i n minus 1. So, these are the remaining odd ordinates. So, i2 is the third ordinate. So, it is odd ordinates like that it will go. Then i4 is again fifth ordinate. So, it is also odd ordinates like that we are writing up to uh, this i n minus 1. So, this is what is Simpson's rule. So, Simpson's rule requires that number of division should be even and uh, the number of ordinates should be odd. Okay. So, this uh, rule that we have stated here by Simpson rule we calculate a t as well as b t also can be calculated and we get straightforward this x t is equal to a t into sin omega n t minus b t cos omega n t divided by m omega n. Whatever form of forcing function may be it does not matter we can find out the numerical integration of a t and b t. However, this rule uh, that I have uh, shown here with a numerical integration by Simpson or trapezoidal rule involves some approximation that is the forcing function is replaced by a piecewise linear function or a piece a segment of this parabolic function. So therefore, in that case if the number of divisions are less the error involved will be more. So, better way to uh, find out more accurate result is to lay down a recursive approach. So, a alternative approach using recursing relations have been developed. So, now let us discuss this. Say this is the force variation with time t. So, this is the force f t and this is the time t. So, we are assuming the variation of the force like that any arbitrary variation and here we consider the piecewise linear variation within a small time interval say delta t i. So, a t i that at instant t i 
we found out this integral a t i as a t i minus 1 plus this integral f tau cos omega n tau d tau but the limit of the integration is within the small time interval so t i minus 1 to t i so you can see t i minus 1 to t i similarly for uh, the other parameter b t so b t is evaluated at the instant t i so b t i equal to b t i minus 1 plus integration t i minus 1 to t i f tau sin omega and tau d tau where this you can see the slope of the variation of the force we can find out that del f i by del t i and what is del f i del f i is difference of the value of the force at t is equal to t i and t is equal to t i minus 1 so we can write del f i equal to f i minus f i minus 1 delta t i is the time instant that we can write our uh, time interval delta t i is a time interval that is the difference between the two successive time instants so t i minus t i minus 1 so now the slope of the force variation that we can find out delta f i by delta t i okay. so this is what is the slope at i okay but since we are taking a piecewise linear function here the slope will be different here the slope will be different like that it will go on so at every instant we are finding or updating the slope and then finding the new forcing term okay so in that way this will give more accurate result compared to the uh, integration approximately taking a number of divisions whatever number of divisions we take discretize the forcing function and then carry out the integration by simpson's rule and trapezoidal rule so these are approximate formula available for integration whereas in this recurrence procedure recurrence uh, approach we will use the exact expression that can be derived for this uh, integral f tau cos omega n uh, tau d tau integration t i minus 1 to t i and also this integral f tau sin omega n tau d tau limit t i minus 1 to t i within the small interval this delta t i we can find out the exact expression if we assume the variation of force from small interval is linear now let us see how we can find out now the recurrence relationship for a t is given by at the instant t i we can find out at instant t is equal to t i we can write a t i equal to a t minus 1 plus integration t i minus 1 t i that is the lower limit and upper limit f tau cos omega and tau d tau then f tau at time tau t is equal to tau the force f tau can be found out as f t minus 1 that is this force plus the increment what is the increment del f i by del t i into tau minus t i minus 1 so since we know the slope we know the slope we can find out this f tau since it is a linear we can easily find out that f tau is equal to f t minus 1 plus the slope theta i into uh, the tau this distance tau minus t i minus 1 so now theta i is nothing but del f i by 
del T i. So, we write this expression as f tau equal to f t minus 1 plus del f i by del T i into tau minus T i minus 1. Now, substitute this f tau in this expression. First, let us show the integration for a t then similarly we can carry out the integration for b t. Now, if I substitute this here, then we take this expression a t i equal to a t i minus 1 plus integration t i minus 1 to t i, this is the lower limit, this is the upper limit into f t i minus 1 plus del f i by del t i into tau minus t i minus 1 cos omega n tau d tau. So, this is the integration a t i ok at time step t i. This integration have to be carried out within the small time interval t i minus 1 to t i. Now, this expression can be broken down into like that del f i del t i into tau cos omega n tau d tau one term minus del f i del t i t i minus 1 cos omega n tau d tau ok. So, breaking this term and writing this integration in this form that uh, we are taking this uh, the constant term with the cos omega and tau because when we decompose it this uh, del f i by del t i into t i minus 1 will be a constant. So, I am plugging this with the, this constant. So, I am writing f t i, I minus 1 minus del f i by del t i into t i minus 1 into cos omega n tau d tau. Whereas, the other term del f i by del t i into t tau, it is a variable because the integration is carried out with respect to tau. So, we are writing here another integral del f i by del t i integration t i minus 1 to t i tau cos omega n tau d tau. You can see this integral is just the integral of cos omega n tau whereas this integral is a integral of the product of two variables. That means here the integration by parts rule have to be applied whereas this integration can be straightforward done with the uh, integration of cos function. So, now how it is done? So, a t i now we write from this step to this step a t i equal to a t i minus 1 plus f t i minus 1 because the f t i minus 1 into del f i by del t i into t i can be taken outside the integral because it is a constant. So, we have taken it outside the integral and we have written f t i minus 1 minus del f i by del t i t i minus 1 that is the constant term and cos omega and tau d tau is integrated and uh, limit is substituted. So, accordingly we get sin omega n t i minus sin omega n t i minus 1 divided by omega n because after integration omega n will come out as a constant with 1 by omega n. So, this integration is carried out. Next this integration, this integration has to be done integration by parts. So, we carry out this integral integration by parts. So, that means uh, it can be easily carried out say this integration t i minus 1 t i 
tau cos omega and tau d tau where if I treat this uh, tau as a first function and cos omega and tau is a second function I can write tau then integration of this second function sin omega and tau divided by omega n limit t i minus 1 t i minus differentiation of the first function that is differentiation of tau with respect to tau is 1 then integration of the second function that is cos omega n tau so that will come as sin omega n tau divided by omega n d tau and limit t i minus 1 t i so another integration is required here so you can see this integration is done here and final result is 1 by omega n into sin omega n t i minus sin omega n t i minus 1 plus 1 by omega n square cos omega n t i minus cos omega n t i minus 1. So we shall write this value here this final value we should write now in this expression ok. Then we can arrange and get the full expression for ATI. So final expression for ATI is now ATI equal to ATI minus 1 that is at the time step ATI at time instant TI ATI is given by this previous ATI ATI minus 1 plus this change. So this change is FTI minus 1 minus del FI by del TI into TI minus 1 into sin omega and TI minus sin omega n t i minus 1 divided by omega n where omega n is the natural frequency plus del f i divided by omega n square del t i into cos omega n t i minus cos omega n t i minus 1 plus omega n into t i sin omega n t i minus t i minus 1 sin omega n t i minus 1 that is the full expression for a t i where a t i minus a t i minus 1 is del a t i. So that means uh, the difference of this a t from the present instant to the previous instant that is at the i at instant and i minus 1 instant is del a t i. Okay. Similarly, the other expression for the uh, in Duhamel integral that is BTI that is another important parameter which is required with the uh, sine function. So that is written as similar procedure is followed that we have carried out for finding the, the expression for ATI. So now BTI would be b t i minus 1 plus f t i minus 1 minus del f i by del t i into t i minus 1 into cos omega n t i minus 1 minus cos omega n t i divided by omega n plus del f i there is the difference of force at two time instant at t is equal to i and t is equal to i minus 1. So del f i divided by omega n square into del t i into sin omega n t i minus sin omega n t i minus 1 minus omega n t i cos omega n t i minus t i minus 1 cos omega n t i minus 1. Hence the expression for the displacement at any time instant t is equal to ti can be written as x ti equal to a ti sin omega n ti minus b ti cos omega n ti divided by 
m omega n. So, this is the expression uh, for the Duhamel integral that is found after following a numerical procedure to find out the a t i and b t i. And uh, since it is a undamped uh, vibration case, therefore, we have uh, used the impulse assessment function for the undamped uh, uh, system. So, that is the impulse assessment function was as you remember m omega n sin omega n t that means h t minus tau was m omega n sin omega n t minus tau. Now, we decompose this as a result we are getting these two terms sin omega n and cos omega n ok sin omega n t and cos omega n t. Now, here you can see because of this constant m omega n we have to divide this uh, the expression x t i by m omega n ok. Now, let us consider the case where the damping is introduced for damp system as we have shown earlier only difference will be there in the impulse assessment function. So, impulse assessment function for the damp system will be 1 by m omega d into e to the power minus j omega n t where j is the damping ratio omega n is the undamped natural frequency into sin omega d t. Here it is a minus sign so minus j omega n t it is a decaying factor. So, now write this uh, expression for damp system x t is equal to 1 by m omega d integration 0 to t f tau e to the power minus j omega n t minus tau sin omega d t minus tau d tau. Again decomposing this to sin and cosine function that we get here sin omega d t uh, cos omega d tau that is one term minus cos omega d t sin omega d tau. So, this term is can be obtained after decomposing this function and here also we can get after decomposing t into e to the power minus, uh, minus minus plus will be there. So, plus j omega n tau ok. So, this is a constant term as far as the limit of the integral is 0 to t and this will be a constant term a, a variable term with tau which will remain inside the integral. So, therefore, we are writing in the next step x t is equal to 1 by m omega d third bracket e to the power minus j omega n t that is treated here as a constant because limit of integration is 0 to t. Then into sin omega d t again this sin omega d t is taken as a constant after this uh, decomposition of sin omega d t minus tau. So, it is taken outside the integral sign. However, this e to the power minus j omega n t which is a decaying factor is common to both sin n sin omega d terms and cos omega d t terms ok. Sin omega d t terms and cos omega d t terms should contain a decaying factor e to the power minus j omega n t. But inside the integral you are seeing that f tau which is a variable function of tau and e to the power j omega n tau that is coming after decomposing this exponential form into two exponential form one is e to the power minus j omega n t and another is e to the power plus j omega n tau. So, here we are getting this term then cos omega d tau d tau. Similarly, here cos omega d t 
integration 0 to t f tau e to the power j omega n tau sin omega d t tau d tau ok now you can see here if i write this uh, constant uh, as we have done earlier this with the integral uh, function the integral function is f tau e to the power j omega n tau cos omega d tau d tau so this integral function or integral expression can be designated as a d t and this integral function or integral expression can be designated as d d t so we are writing here x t is equal to e to the power minus j omega n t that is a common decaying factor into a d t sin omega d t minus b d t cos omega d t now compared to undamped system you are noticing here that a d and b d or a b contains the product of three terms earlier for uh, uh, undamped system where j is 0 you are getting only two terms that has to be integrated now you are getting product of three terms so f tau e to the power j omega n tau cos omega d tau d tau integration 0 to t gives you a d t similarly b d t is given by 0 to t f tau e to the power j omega n tau sin omega d tau d tau so this integral expression have to be found out and uh, if i carry out the numerical integration of this expression can be found out if the form of f t is known or uh, in discretized form also if f t is available then we can use any of the standard numerical integration procedure to calculate a d and b d and then we can find out the response x t now let us also develop a recursive approach for this damped system so considering time instant t i minus 1 and t i here we can find at any time instant tau f tau equal to f t i minus 1 plus del f i divided by del t i into tau minus t i minus 1 so this expression we have written due to the assumption that the forcing function is taken as a piecewise linear within the small interval that del t i so if the interval is small that assumption of piecewise linearity is uh, very well uh, applicable so therefore this function can be substituted this f tau can be substituted in the expression of a d t now substituting this f tau in a d a d t we now get this a d t i equal to del a d t i minus 1 uh, actually it is uh, the previous time instant what is a d is found out so that is there whereas delta a d delta a d will be just found out as a d t i minus a d uh, t i minus 1 ok so here a d t i equal to a d t i minus 1 plus f t i minus 1 minus del f i divided by del t i into t i minus 1 into integration of t i minus 1 to t i e to the power j omega n tau cos omega d tau d tau so this is the constant term here we have taken after decomposing this there is f t minus 1 minus del f i by del t i into t i minus 1 so we have taken this as a constant term and therefore outside the integral and the integral is 
e to the power j omega n tau cos omega d tau d tau. The second term which contains the tau is del f i by del t i integration limit t i minus 1 to t i tau e to the power j omega n tau cos omega d tau d tau. So, this integration has to be carried out. Similarly, we can get b d t i b d t i is equal to b d t i minus 1 b d t i minus 1 plus f t i minus 1 minus del f i by del t i into t i minus 1 integration t i minus 1 to t i e to the power j omega n tau into sin omega d tau d tau plus del f i by del t i integration t i minus 1 to t i tau e to the power j omega n tau sin omega d tau d tau. Let us use some notations to shorten the expressions. So, this expression is long. So, therefore, we are using this expression as I1. Uh, I1 is e to the power j omega n tau cos omega d tau d tau. So, that is one expression and its integral is given by e to the power j omega n tau divided by j omega n whole square plus omega d square into j omega n cos omega d tau plus omega d sin omega d tau and limit has to be substituted. The lower limit is t i minus 1 and upper limit is t i. If we substitute this here in case of uh, in place of tau then we get this expression for the integral i 1. So, i 1 is this this exponential term and cosine term the product of this two term is integrated then we get i 1. Similarly, uh, this other integral has to be also uh, shown and then i 2 is nothing but t i minus 1 to t i e to the power j omega n tau sin omega d tau d tau equal to e to the power j omega n tau divided by j omega n square plus omega d square into j omega n sin omega d tau minus omega d cos omega d tau limit of the integration is t i minus 1 to t i. So, this integral have been found or written after consulting the tables of integral. Then other integral that is required which are the product of uh, three uh, variables one is tau other is e to the power j omega n tau and another is cos omega d tau d tau. So, here the integration is expressed as tau minus j omega n divided by j omega n whole square plus omega d square into i prime 1 minus omega d divided by j omega n square plus omega d square into i prime 2 and the limit is substituted t i minus 1 to t i. Similarly, i 4 is integration with limit t i minus 1 to t i tau e to the power j omega n tau sin omega d tau d tau result of integration is tau minus j omega n divided by j omega n square plus omega d square into i prime 2 plus omega d divided by j omega n square plus omega d square into i prime 1 and the limit of integration is t i minus 1 to t i that have to be substituted. Whereas, you are finding here new uh, symbols i prime 1 and uh, i prime 2. So, what are this? The i prime 1 and i prime 2 are corresponding integrals in terms of tau. That means, i 1 and i 2 prime are the integral of that is we have found out i 1 and i 2 in, in our 
this I2 is here, I1 is here. So, I1 and I2 in terms of tau that is here written as I1 prime and I2 prime. So, I1 and I2 before substitution of limit are designated as I1 prime and I2 prime. So, these are the symbols appearing here. Okay. So, once we get this uh, AD, then we can uh, get the parameter of this response ATI and here because of its damp system, so we are assuming a subscript D. So, here ADTI is equal to AD T i minus 1 plus F T i minus 1 minus del F i by del T i into T i minus 1 into I 1 plus del F i divided by del T i into I 3 B D T i equal to uh, this B D T i minus 1 plus F T i minus 1 minus del F i by del T i into T i minus 1 into I 2 plus del F i by del T i I 4. Hence, expression for displacement at time instant t is equal to T i will be x T i equal to e to the power minus j omega and t into a d T i sin omega and T i minus b d T i cos omega and T i divided by m omega n. Let us discuss a numerical problem. We take a simply supported beam uh, that is the our system continuous system a simply supported beam is taken with uh, mass m modulus of uh, elasticity e and moment of inertia of cross section i. So, at this uh, mid span it is subjected to a force f t with the variation shown here. So, this is the variation of f t. This is the mid span L by 2. Okay. So, we have to find out the uh, response of the system using the Duhamel integral uh, with time step t is equal to 0 0.01 that is the sample time uh, that we have taken here uh, with which we have sampled the forcing function. So, force duration is 0 to point, uh, zero 0.08. Now, first let us find the natural frequency and here it is written that we have to neglect the damping and uh, we consider the first mode only. So, omega 1 is found equal to pi square root over E i divided by m l to the power 4 and substituting the value of e i m and l you can see here we are now getting the natural frequency in the first mode as 62.42 radian per second. Then the mode shape in the uh, corresponding to first mode first natural frequency is phi 1 x equal to sin pi x by l. Therefore, the displacement at any location x at the instant t is given by phi 1 x into eta 1 t. Eta 1 is the time dependent coordinate which we want to find uh, using the Duhamel's integral. So, eta 1 double prime into t plus omega 1 square eta 1 t equal to f t. So, now we carry out the integration in tabular form. So, what we get here first we write the time. So, first column represents the time 0 0.01, 0 0.02 like that up to the end of the pulse we have obtained it 0 0.08. Then f tau is written in the column 2. Uh, according to this figure whatever we find at 0 0.01 this force is 40 Newton, 0 2 it is 60 Newton, at 0 3 it is 100 Newton, like that whatever is there is sampled at uh, time instance we are writing here. 
in the table. So, 0, 40 corresponding to time instant 0 0.01 at 0 0.02, 0 0.02 it is 60, 0 0.03 it is 100, 0 0.04 it is 90, 0 0.05 it is 50, 0 0.06 it is 45, 0 0.07 it is 38, 0 0.08 it is 0. So, we are basically required to calculate this uh, two uh, integration. One is AT, AT, and this is given by 0 to T, F tau cos omega and tau D tau. And another we require to find out DT equal to 0 to T f tau sin omega and tau d tau. So, therefore, we calculate systematically this f tau cos uh, this is f tau cos 62.42 that is the natural frequency. So, f tau cos omega and tau. So, that is we have written here. Similarly, here f tau sin uh, 62.42 what is this 62.42 t tau that is actually 62.42 is your natural frequency omega 1 ok. So, we have tabulated the values at every time instant you can see this f tau cos omega and tau have the value 0 32.456 19.008 minus 27.72 minus 71.93 minus 49.99 minus 37.05 minus 12.78 and 0. Similarly, f tau sin 62.42 we are getting 0 23.38 56.91 95.48 54.09 minus 25.54 minus 35.79 and 0. So, now we carry out the uh, integration numerical integration by any of the known procedure. So, we know the trapezoidal rule and Simpson rule that I have discussed and uh, AT and BT is found out by both the rules. You can see the trapezoidal rule gives A equal to minus 1.5. You can see I have written here this is the time instant delta t by 2 that is delta t is 0 0.01 divided by 2 and then inside the second bracket I have written first ordinate and last ordinate which are 0 and 2 times the sum of the other ordinates we have written. So, this results in a value minus 1.5. Similarly, b we have calculated what is b? b is the numerical integration of f tau sin omega n tau. So, from the table that we have constructed in the earlier side, we now find that b is equal to 0 0.01 divided by 2 again first ordinate plus last ordinate and 2 times the sum of the other ordinates. So, this value yields uh, or gives the result as 1.6956. Now, if we apply the Simpson's rule which is uh, replacement of the curve by a piecewise segment of parabola then a is delta t by 3 so delta t is 0 0.01 divided by 3 and you can see inside the second bracket i have used the simpson's rule whatever is given first ordinate plus last ordinate then four times the sum of the even ordinates that i have written here plus 2 times the sum of the remaining odd ordinates. Similarly, b is found out and a is the integral of f tau cos omega and tau and b is the integral of uh, this f tau sin omega and tau. So, the value of a applying the Simpson's rule becomes minus 1.4 and it is very close to this uh, trapezoidal rule that is minus 1.5. Uh, then again here b is also 1.6911 it is in trapezoidal rule we are getting 1.6956 ok. 
So, uh, during force vibration period that uh, now we write this uh, value that uh, whatever we have get uh, we have got here we use the value from Simpson's rule. So, it is A t is minus 1.4 and B t is 1.6911. So, we are writing here that is uh, in the equation of motion we have seen that uh, the mass is 1. So, because it is normalized with respect to mode shape, uh, mode shape is normalized with respect to mass. So, therefore, we are getting here uh, 1 divided by m omega n. So, m is taken 1 and that is 62.42. That is the natural frequency into that is the a t minus 1.4 cos 62.42 t minus 1.6911 that is your uh, B t into sin 62.42 t. So, then uh, maximum uh, the response that we find out is uh, equal to an eta max equal to 1 by 62.42 root over 1.4 square plus 1.6911 square equal to 0 0.035. So, this is the maximum response of the generalized coordinate and the uh, response of this simply supported beam at mid span at the physical coordinate now is y l by 2 t is nothing but phi 1 x into eta 1 t. For maximum value we now write eta max into phi l by 2 since the phi is sin pi x by l and this is l by 2 mid span. So, therefore, the value of the mode shape at uh, x is equal to l by 2 is 1 because it is normalized with respect to mass. So, th therefore, we are getting this y is equal to eta max into phi l by 2 is nothing but 0 0.035 meter. So, this is one response that we have got using the numerical procedure of Duhamel's integral. Now, let us use uh, the recursive relations. Before that, let us uh, compare the uh, dynamic displacement with the static displacement. Static deflection if a maximum load here in the load time history is 100 Newton. So, if I use this 100 Newton load and with the length and EI that is given in the problem, we get y static is equal to 0 0.026 meter. So, therefore, dynamic amplification for such type of forcing function of the displacement response is 1.34. So, at the end of loading time the beam is subjected to phi vibration and uh, phi vibration uh, is obtained as this phi x into a cos omega n t minus 0 0.08 plus b sin omega n t minus 0 0.08. Whereas, the initial displacement and the velocity has to be assumed at the end of the uh, force uh, that is at end of the pulse uh, for the short duration 0 0.08. So, at the 0 0.08 whatever the displacement and velocity you get displacement is found as 0 0.0198 meter and velocity at t is equal to 0 0.08 is found as 1.814843 meter per second. So, with this value we can again proceed to find out the time history in the free vibration phase. Okay. Now, if I use the recurrence relationship, then at each time instant, uh, we find out this delta A t and delta B t. What is uh, delta A t? Delta A t is equal to del A t i minus A t i minus 1 that is at the current step what is a and the previous step what is a if I find the difference that will be delta a. Similarly, delta b t i 
will be B T i minus B T i minus 1. So, from the expression that is developed for uh, by recursive relationship, we we'll find that at each time instant uh, this delta a. So, delta a at 0 0.01 is found as 0 0.1809, 0 0.02 it is found at found as 0 0.2833, 0 0.03 it is found as minus 0 0.0122. At point zero four, it is minus point five three four two. At point zero five, minus point six four four two. At point zero six, it is minus point four four eight four. Point zero seven, it is minus two five one six. And point zero eight, minus point zero two five three. So once I know the delta a at the current step and uh, a uh, at the previous step we can find out a at the current step so we have found out this a at every time step we have found out similarly delta b is found out from the recurrence relationship that we have derived earlier by analytical expression of the integral then we write this uh, delta b as at uh, time instant t is equal to 0 0.01 second it is 0 0.08 at time instant 0 0.02 it is 0 0.4023 at time instant 0 0.03 it is 0 0.7872 at time instant 0 0.04 it is 0 0.7670 and like that and up to 0 0.08 uh, we have found out and you can see this value at uh, point 0 0.08 it is minus point 0.1862 so this delta b is found out so now we can find bt at each time step so bt at the instant um, t is equal to 0 it is 0 so delta b is equal to uh, is point 0 0.08 at t is equal to point 0 0.01 so bt is now can be found out as you can see here b t i is nothing but delta b t i plus b t i minus 1. Similarly, we can write here a t i is equal to delta a t i plus a t i minus 1. So, the columns of this table that is bt is completed now so bt is found out now the response is given as response is given as xti at any instant or instead xti will write this y at l at mid span l by 2 y l by 2 ti so this is given as uh, your this a t i into cos omega n tau uh, sorry omega n t i minus b t i sin omega n t i divided by omega i ok omega 1 actually we are considering the first mode so accordingly we calculate all the responses here one by one and ultimately you can see from this table we are getting the maximum response as 0 0.0390 at y is equal to l by uh, y is equal to l l by two, uh, x is equal to l by 2 that is y that is the displacement of the beam is represented by the ordinate y and we are finding that at x is equal to l by 2 it is 0 0.039 okay and uh, it is occurring at a uh, time instant 0 0.06 but this is also an approximate method because it is numerically integrated and uh, this result that is recursive relation will improve the result that we used 
earlier with the Simpson rules or trapezoidal rule. But here we can see the percentage deviation of the approximate integral that we have carried out using the Simpson or the trapezoidal rule is around 10.25 percent. So this method that I have discussed is very powerful method and can be used for any type of excitation even for earthquake ground motion this procedure can be adopted. So let us summarize today's lecture. In this lecture, we discussed numerical procedure of Duhamel integral to find out the force vibration response due to any arbitrary forcing function. We adopted recurrence relationship to find the value of displacement and each at each discrete time instance. Actually, we derived the re recurrence relationships. A numerical example is given to obtain the mid-span displacement of simply supported beam subjected to arbitrary variation of force for certain duration uh, as given in this uh, problem and uh, the variation was completely arbitrary though no mathematical function was prescribed for such a variation. So therefore we have demonstrated that Duhamel integral is very much useful for any arbitrary variation of uh, forcing function which may not be uh, described by a mathematical function. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.